From anatomy to anesthesiology, from pathology to pharmacology, from microbiology to medicine, a one-man resource to the world of health sciences. Welcome to Dr. Paul's Medical Lectures. A practicing physician, Dr. Paul offers you essential insights on diseases afflicting millions of people around the world. For today's lecture, here is Dr. Paul. This is Dr. Paul. Thank you very much for tuning to our channel today. This evening I want to talk a few minutes about RH incompatibility. You see, many women nowadays suffering with uh, RH incompatibility. RH incompatibility is basically a condition that develops when a pregnant woman has RH negative blood and the baby in her womb has RH positive blood, okay? So the mother has RH negative and the baby has RH positive. So during pregnancy, the red blood cells from the fetus, they can get into the mom's bloodstream through the placenta, okay? So the incompatibility that is when it happens. So when the mom is RH negative, and the RH positive fetal cells, when they enter into the mom's, that is the maternal circulation, these fetal red blood cells will be treated as foreign bodies. So the mom produces antibodies against these fetal blood cells. So those antibodies crosses the placenta and go into the uh, circulation system of the fetus and they attack the red blood cells of the fetus. And when those red blood cells are destroyed, bilirubin is released. And you see, as long as the fetus is in the mother, the mom's uh, circulatory system will clean up that bilirubin. But when the baby is born, that bilirubin start to act as a neurotoxic substance. It start to accumulate in the basal ganglia. And as a result, the baby starts to develop problems like anemia, erythroblastosis fetalis, and even death, depending on the degree of incompatibility. So RH incompatibility, it develops when the mother is RH negative and the baby is RH positive. The RH blood group, you see, it's a very complex human blood group. The RH antigens are grouped in three pairs, CC, DD, and EE, okay? CC, DD, and EE. And D is the particular concern. A woman who is lacking RH factor, we, say her, we, we, we call her RH negative. And the fetus is RH positive. So the fetus is, is having that raises antigen. So that fetal cells, when they enter into the mother, the mom start to produce the antibodies. And those antibodies cross into the placenta and the, the placental cells will be attacked. And the fetal cells will be attacked. So now, According to the incidence, you see some regions like Basque region in northern Spain, people have like 35% of RH incompatibility. That is something unthinkable. Now, RH incompatibility, when the RH negative mother, it's like 16%. And most of the cases, like 7% of them, happen within six months of delivery. And the other 7% happen like during the second pregnancy, then the remaining 2% in the antipartum. Okay, so it's overall 16%. Now the initial, the, uh, that means the first maternal immune response to RH sensitization is low levels of immunoglobulin, IgG. Within six weeks to six months, IgG antibodies become detectable. So, in contrast to IgM, Ig, IgG is capable of, of crossing the placenta. So, IgM does not cross, but when IgGs come, they can cross the placenta and destroy the fatal red blood cells. That is when the hemolysis occurs. So, IgG is the immunoglobulin that crosses the placenta and destroy the fatal red blood cells, and resulting in fatal anemia.
And as uh, fetal red blood cells are being destroyed, the extramedullary erythropoiesis starts to happen. So there will be a lot of uh, nucleated red blood cells and uh, um, in the in the circulatory system and these uh, these are not matured enough and the hemolysis starts to happen lot of uh, heme is produced which is converted into bilirubin and both of uh, both the heme and bilirubin they are neurotoxic and when the as i said that when the fetus is in utero the bilirubin is effectively removed by the placenta and metabolized by the mother but after the baby is born, that is when the problem starts because baby's uh, uh, systems are not matured enough to deal with these uh, immature red blood cells and heme and uh, bilirubin that is produced due to the hemolysis. What happens? These substances become neurotoxic and start to attack the fetal red blood cells. So when you receive the pregnant woman, you should screen them first of all. That's the basic step. What is their blood group? ABO incompatible. What is their RH status? Are they RH positive or RH negative? Do an indirect Coombs test. So all RH negative mothers should receive prophylaxis. Okay, that's that is the rule. All RH. And when they visit at 28 weeks, antibody screening is performed. If they are negative, 300 grams of RH immunoglobulin, that is RHIG, is given. If they are positive, you should manage them as RH sensitized. When they come at 35 weeks, you should repeat the antibody screening. If they are negative, the patient is just observed. If they are uh, screening is positive, the patient is managed as RH sensitized. And then postpartum. If the infant is RH positive or DU positive, 300 grams of RHIgg is administered to the mother, provided the maternal antibody screening is negative. Although RHIg should generally be given within 72 hours, so give them in 72 hours, it has been shown to be effective in preventing ISA immunization, even if you give up to 28 days after delivery, okay? But if antibody screen is positive, the patient is managed as if she will be or his tensitized during the next pregnancy. So special anti-RH immunoglobulin is given to the mother at 28 weeks gestation and within 72 hours after delivery or miscarriage or ectopic pregnancy or abortion. This prevents formation of antibodies that might affect the future infants. So in women who are already producing antibodies, there is no benefit to using RHIGGM. So if the woman is RH uh, antibodies positive, that means she's already producing. So there is no point in giving immunoglobulin, folks. So those are the important points. So when, the, when she's uh, positive, you do amniocentesis and uh, you take the fetal blood cell or you can also do cardiocentesis that is percutaneous umbilical blood sampling and um, despite some risk you can determine fetal blood type and you can also see how much anemia has happened and you can uh, treat them accordingly so that is about rh incompatibility basically the mum is rh negative the baby is rh positive the baby's blood cells, RH positive blood cells, goes into mum's circulation. So the mum treats these fetal red blood cells as, as foreign bodies. So the mum starts to produce these antibodies which cross into the fetus across the placenta and causes the anemia and the death in many cases. That's about RH incompatibility. Thank you very much. Thanks for listening. For more medical videos, please visit us at www.drpaul.org and take time to browse through hundreds of health videos we regularly post on our site. If you are preparing for USMLE, PLAB, and other medical exams, make sure you visit our website to browse through our videos explaining the essential points you need to know before taking these examinations. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org. Thank you, and may God richly bless you.
bless you. Are you preparing for USMLE? Please do not waste thousands of dollars on training courses. Get the books written by Dr. Paul with the student-to-student -student tips and memory aids. The success will be yours, and you will soon realize your dream of becoming a physician in the United States. If you are preparing for Step 2 Clinical Skills, study USMLE Smasher, a guide helping thousands of medical students to pass this examination. For more information, visit us at www.drpaul.org.